I just don't know enough, really, to be honest, to say that I need it or I don't. Tonight, flipping the switch on the conversation about COVID-19 vaccines. Seems like it's rushed. That's the distrust. We introduce a Metro Atlanta mom hesitant about getting the vaccine to four medical experts. I think hesitancy is totally okay and, and totally normal. She decides the questions to ask. You should have questions. She conducts the interviews. The number one question is... We'll share what she learned and whether she plans to get the vaccine. Do you have a decision? My decision would be... Good evening. COVID-19 vaccines are in the third month of distribution in the U.S. While millions want the shots as soon as possible, others are not so sure. Health officials say if not enough people get immunized, it could prolong the pandemic. 11 Alive's Andy Parati follows a vaccine-hesitant mom drawing her own conclusions. Welcome back to Squawk Box, everybody. We have some breaking news from Pfizer. Pfizer executives are calling it one of the biggest medical breakthroughs in the past 100 years. The vaccine showed to be more than 90% effective. The process of the speed did not compromise at all safety. There is still significant portion of the population, about half in this country, that remains defiant about actually getting the shot. It's a decision that requires trust in science many of us know little about. Something Joy Howard from Gwinnett County, Georgia has thought about for months. She's 40 years old, works in insurance, married with two girls, and believes COVID-19 is a real threat. To be honest, it's, it seems like a death sentence, even though I know that's kind of extreme. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you, you're hearing people die from this. Afraid to get infected, but not confident to take the most two widely available COVID-19 vaccines in the U.S. Here's a quick recap. The vaccines currently available are made by Pfizer and Moderna. The Food and Drug Administration issued an emergency use authorization for them in December. Both require two doses and report about a 95% effectiveness. And both were developed in less than 275 days. Vaccines typically take 15 to 20 years to make. It seems like it's rushed, but I know there's a need for it to be rushed. So then you think about, okay, well, what steps or what um, requirements were taken out in order for them to get this through quickly? But I just don't know enough, really, to be honest, to say that I need it or I don't. Up until a few weeks ago, Joy and I didn't know each other. We connected after I emailed the moms in our newsroom writing, searching, searching for a Metro, Metro Atlanta mom, mom hesitant, hesitant about, about getting, getting a COVID, COVID vaccine. vaccine. Oh, thank you. Take it on a skewer. Three days later, Joy invited me to meet in her backyard. The goal is to get it on fire, right? And then you blow it out. She's used to having a glass of wine by the fire, but we settled for s'mores because TV rules or something. She's a pro. Me? Not so much. Oh man, that is really hot. Especially while trying to eat with a face shield. Oh, <laughs> did you see what I just did? Oh God, I just did it again. This is a fail. Nope, you're just getting back on the horse. And back to the subject at hand. Like many in the black community, she's skeptical of getting a COVID-19 vaccine. A survey of black adults in December conducted by Kaiser revealed only 35% said they would get the vaccine. Some of the participants cited the infamous government-backed Tuskegee syphilis study conducted in the 1930s. The study enrolled 600 black men, including 399 who had syphilis. The men were tricked into believing they were getting free medical care, but were just observed instead. Dozens died. Does that play into this oh, at yeah. all? Number one. That's the number one overall. That is. That's the distrust. Hesitant, but still willing to learn more. And over the next four days, she'll get to ask four experts all of her burning questions. She's the one asking the questions, and she has a lot to ask. Is one better than the other? Can a woman breastfeed if she had the vaccine? Has anyone died, you know? How you doing? Joy. Hello, Joy. <laughs> it's now time for Joy to get to work and put one of our experts in the hot seat. First up, Dr. Jane Morgan. 
And your joy? Yes. Dr. Morgan's resume is long, a cardiologist by training, currently a scientist with Piedmont Healthcare in Atlanta as its clinical director of its COVID task force. Okay. Okay. So um, I guess I'll start with the number one question is, if you've had COVID-19 before, mm -hmm. do you need the vaccine? Right, so the answer to that is yes, you still need the vaccine. It's unclear how long you have immunity or if you have immunity. Have there been any studies or anyone saying that they got the vaccine but still tested positive for COVID? Sure, so you can test positive for COVID even after receiving the vaccine. There are generally two scenarios for that. One is you actually um, had been in contact with it before the vaccine and didn't realize it. Right, okay, that makes or sense. Or you came in contact with it just after receiving that first dose and you didn't realize it. Dr. Morgan tells Joy she got the vaccine herself a few weeks ago with little to no side effects. She then explained the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine trials had a higher than average black representation of volunteers with some promising results. The only subpopulation that had zero, and I mean no reports of a, po a positive COVID infection was the black population. Dr. Morgan tells Joy something important about the vaccines you don't hear a lot about. These vaccines are not technically fully FDA approved yet. And the reason for that is because the pharmaceutical companies are still tracking people who participated in the vaccine trials. We don't have that data because the United States and the world recognized that we were in a pandemic within an emergency and decided to approve the vaccines based on their safety profile and based on their efficacy, meaning that they were safe and that they worked in preventing COVID. For now, it's just an FDA emergency authorization. And, and could the vaccine potentially protect against different strands of the coronavirus? So as far as we know, it's protective against all known strains. No. Okay. Currently, when people think about mutations, they think something's coming yeah. bigger, yeah. angrier, yeah. crazier. Yeah. Um, but actually, in science, the word mutation just means it's changing. So. I thank you. Time to check back in with Joy after her interview. So when we first started this process, you were right in the middle. You weren't a, a hard no or a hard yes. Where are you right now in, in, in that needle right now? Well, the pendulum is swinging a little bit closer to um, not minding to take the vaccine. But that's not a yes or no. And there's a lot more Joy wants to know before making a decision. Coming up, Joy gets a chance to understand more about children and the vaccine. Plus, her conversation with a doctor who sits on a CDC committee that helped determine how the vaccines are used. Didn't know that. Um, so that's, that is hopeful. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it is. I hope it doesn't fall. We're back with Joy Howard, a mom from Gwinnett County, Georgia, skeptical about getting a COVID-19 vaccine. I feel like it seems like it's rushed. She's interviewed one expert so far. So um, I guess I'll start with... Where she learned about the high effectiveness of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, its likely protections against mutations, and why both are considered safe even though the FDA has only approved them for emergency use. Joy now wants to know who ultimately made sure the vaccines were safe and how they know. Up next, someone who knows a lot about that. He's Dr. Henry Bernstein, a pediatrician in New York, who sits on the CDC Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, or ACIP. It's a group of independent medical experts, not government employees, who reviewed all of the vaccine trial results and then recommended how the vaccines should be administered. We set up a video call for Joy to meet him. Here's Joy. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Hey. How are you? I am good, Joy. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you for allowing this opportunity um, for all of us to learn, because that's what I've been, um, that's what's been happening. But I still have questions. <laughs> you should have questions. Totally understandable. The reason why I'm interested in knowing about 
the virus and the vaccine is because I want to protect my mom. This is Joy's mom, Betty Jeffries. She's 72 years old and lives with her daughter about half the year. Betty is considered high risk of suffering severe COVID complications because of several health ailments, including diabetes. But I, of course, want to know more about the vaccine for myself, for my mom and for my kids. Dr. Bernstein explains to Joy that the COVID vaccine trials happened in three phases. Phase one included just a handful of people and the very first time the vaccine is tested in humans. Phase two involved testing the vaccine on a targeted population intended to help identify the most effective dosage. The final phase included providing the vaccine to thousands of volunteers to determine whether it's safe and effective. But every one of those steps need to happen and did happen. It doesn't stop there. What's next after that is that we, the CDC and the FDA, are closely monitoring the whole administration of the vaccine, the safety of the vaccine, how well the vaccines are doing what we expect that they will do based on those studies. Joy previously learned there's a small chance of infection after getting the vaccine, but she's curious about whether getting the shot could help reduce the severity of symptoms. What if they got the vaccine? Would it kind of minimize at that point? Is it too late or will it still be able to kind of minimize some longer, um, more intensive effects? It, it The latter. Okay. It really should prevent them okay. from having the the moderate or severe uh, symptoms and uh, consequences. After speaking with Dr. Bernstein for nearly an hour in New York. Thank you for your candor. It's now time for Joy to return to Atlanta with another expert in the hot seat, this time outside the Morehouse School of Medicine on a rainy afternoon. I'm Lily Emmergluck. I'm actually a pediatrician. Dr. Emmergluck wears a lot of hats at the medical school. She's a pediatric infectious disease specialist, a population health service researcher, and the principal investigator for the school's participation in the COVID Prevention Network. I'm a mom of two small children. Joy gets right to work and asks Dr. Emmergluck why some children infected with COVID-19 don't show symptoms. You know, uh, I'm not sure, but Children definitely, number one, uh, can be infected. Number two, they can transmit it uh, to other people, especially in their household. So we're actually looking at doing pediatric studies in these vaccine trials because we recognize that the pediatric and adolescent population is a population that hasn't been factored in. So if, if children weren't a part of, that population was a part of the trials, should they or will they be able to get the current vaccines that are out? So no, we start with adult, healthy adult population. And then uh, once we determine that for adult healthy population, uh, it works and it's effective and it seems like it's safe, then we move to other populations in the adult side. It's good to have firsthand information because it can be over, it's overwhelming. This is very informative. It's now time to check back in with Joy after her interviews. I thought they were well informed. Um, they were able to address my questions. That way I'll be able to understand it and digest it later. More informed, but she's still not ready to make her decision. Up next, Joy meets a scientist who created an organization that combats misinformation online. Trust has to be earned. And I think it's it comes from actions, not words. It's Joy Howard's last day meeting an expert to learn more about COVID-19 vaccines. When we first met her five days ago, the Metro Atlanta mom was far from eager to be first in line to get a shot. I just don't know enough, really, to be honest, to say that I need it or I don't. So far, she's interviewed a clinical director of a hospital's COVID task force, a member of the CDC committee, which recommends the vaccine dosage, and a pediatrician at the Morehouse School of Medicine. I'm gonna introduce you to Joy. Last, but certainly not least, Joy now sits down with Dr. Joe Smizer. Hey, Joe. Hey. How are you? I am doing good. Dr. Smizer is a former CDC scientist who now runs an organization called 
Public Good Projects, or PGP, a nonprofit that specializes combating public health disinformation online. According to PGP's own analysis, anti-vax crusaders have almost doubled their efforts since March, spreading COVID vaccine conspiracies that are shared millions of times a day. So right now, we're totally overwhelmed. This is like Christmas for them. That also includes misleading headlines from tabloid publications, like this one Joy found on Instagram, which reads, 23 die in Norway after receiving Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. I didn't, I wasn't able to read the full story, but the headline was just enough, right? Like, it was striking. Yeah, 23 people in Norway die after receiving the COVID. Well, I have, I have what eventually happened. What happened was some people died like a week after they got the vaccine. Um, and so the government decided to be really careful, like deployed an army of people to figure out, well, was there any link to, to the vaccine? I think the big thing is, do, do the number of people who die, is it a higher number than what we, what we would see if we weren't vaccinating people? And so far, it's the number we would expect to see. Dr. Smizer offers Joyce some advice on how to sniff out red flags online. If they're trying to make me feel something, it's probably not true. And if they're, if they're trying to get me to believe that there's a conspiracy or they're the only one who has seen the truth, then I feel like it's probably not true. I appreciate you um, saying that. I think it's really brave of you to do this. It's a vulnerable thing to be on TV, admitting that, that you even have questions mm -hmm. and getting answers, so. Well, you can't pass up a, on an opportunity like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, it's time to learn how Joy feels after talking firsthand with all the experts. Will she take or pass on a COVID vaccine after everything she's learned? So um, my decision would be... Nearly a week after meeting Joy Howard, her quest to learn more about COVID-19 vaccines comes to a conclusion. Joy, here we are, back to where we started. Since then, I've introduced you to four experts, Dr. Morgan, Immergluck, Dr. Bernstein, Dr. Smeisner. Do you have a decision? I think I do. I still have questions. Okay. But they won't be answered. I have to just come to terms with that. Okay. Um, but I've been, my guard has been, you know, it's been let down by a few things that the experts and doctors presented. So that outweighs the unknown for me. Mm -hmm. So my decision would be to get the vaccine. Wow. What's your why? My why is because, uh, I mean, I know more. I've never learned or maybe even cared to learn about vaccine prior to this. But just knowing about all of the eyes that were on it, all the different committees that take part in this, there wasn't anything missing from the FDA emergency approval. Like they didn't skip a step. Is yeah, that what you're there, saying? there were no shortcuts. And a week later, Joy invited us to the Gwinnett County Health Department as she and her mom got their first vaccine. You're both here for your first Pfizer vaccine? Because Joy is her mom's caregiver, she's also eligible to get a vaccine as part of the 65 plus age group who can get a shot now. My heartbeat is not racing, so I'm, I'm good. Once hesitant, now confident, Joy finally gets her shot. Yay. Yay. Did meeting these experts help you trust the science more? Yes because there's not someone else telling me about the information. I wish everyone who's on the fence or not could just be a part of this because I don't know how else <laughs> anyone can get, sitting from here, um, will be able to get this information in that, that form. What a great moment. You really feel her relief. Andy, nice to see you without a face shield. How's Joy doing? Any side effects? Hi, Cheryl. Joy is doing great. Other than a little arm soreness from the day that she got the shot, she's had no side effects. She and her mom are scheduled to get that second dose of the vaccine in a few days. Joy spent hours talking to these experts. Is there a way people can see the full interviews?
Yeah, so Joy interviewed each medical expert for about an hour each. So that means that we clearly did not have enough time to put all of her questions and everything she learned in a 30-minute show, but we did post all of her raw interviews in this story on 11alive.com. And as you will watch, she came prepared for those interviews. Cheryl. Andy, thanks a lot.